Well, I think, um, you know, the demand that we have or the supply that we have this year around 650,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent um, is, is probably just about being met. But if you look at any forecast that you see out there, it's going to be a five-fold increase in that by the end of the decade. And you have uh, groups like the IEA calling for the need for another 50 additional producing lithium mines by the end of the decade. I think it just shows you you know, the massive shortage potential that is coming. Simon, we've seen so many shortages in recent times, first around COVID. Now, as we uh, talk about still more demand in the system for various different um, uh, products and services, what does lithium look like down the track then? Are we talking about something that's akin to the semiconductor crisis? It, it could do. I mean, I, I, I do think that there are, I mean, that, that there are the potential mines out there. There are the potential deposits in development. I mean, I think what I would say is that we need we need all of the we need the US and all its allies and 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 the Western supply chains to really take note and start driving these forward and start getting these mines in production. We, we, we don't need them coming on in 10 years time. They need the investment. We need, uh, you know, the support now to really drive these mines into production sooner rather than later. Simon, the, the high price of lithium and the huge demand has led people to have a reinvigorated look at alternatives as well. And again, look, I know very little about the alternatives and where they are in terms of scale. But you've got zinc manganese, uh, manganese oxide batteries. People are talking about organosilicon electrolyte batteries as well uh, and other alternatives. Gold, nanowire, gel electrolytes as well. What are the possibilities that actually alternatives to lithium be, could, could become a meaningful alternative in the short to medium term? Well, I, you know, I think you have to understand it's taken lithium iron 40 years to get to this point. I mean, the amount of development that goes in, the amount of securing supply, the amount of work that has to be done on supply chains is huge. Um, lithium, don't forget, is the third um, element on the periodic table. It's the lightest metal. It's a perfect conductor. And I think that's why you see most of the um, chemistries that are out there are lithium based because it is the ideal metal for this. So that's not to say that other um, technologies may be acquired, but if you ask me, they're a long way off. You have in lithium ion, you have actually a, a, a perfect um, a, a battery for um, transport, uh, for our mobile devices, for even smaller storage systems. So I'm not saying you won't see other technologies out there and evolving, but it takes a long time. And I think in lithium, you do have a perfect mineral for this uh, for these applications. Hi, I'm Joanna Bersacci, and thank you for watching. You can check out more of our videos by clicking on the boxes on the screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more from CNBC International. Thank you for watching.